So welcome back to Kaf Kuba. Um, I have here a CFL or compact fluorescent lamp. Um, this is nothing new. Uh, these were all the rage as they tried to replace uh, incandescent light bulbs a few years ago. Uh, and very quickly these have gone out of style for the um, LED the new LED lamps um, and the LED lamps are much more elegant they have a nicer look a nicer light output um, and you know people people like them in their homes so these are kind of I got this one at work because people are just getting rid of them even though they were expensive a few years ago so I've watched a lot of videos on what to make out of uh, the components within a compa uh, compact fluorescent lamp and I um, was just curious, and as you've seen in my other videos, I'm, I'm by no means a genius. Um, I, I do get frustrated watching other people's videos. Uh, and this isn't, uh, this isn't a criticism of those other people because they're probably much better troubleshooters and engineers than I am. But uh, a lot of guys like Shango66 or um, there's, there's many others, they'll, they'll plow right through a radio or TV glass slinger. Um, and they assume you know everything about the component and they swap out capacitors, they troubleshoot components in the board, they, you know, they break down the TVs or radios or whatever it is they're working on and in such a fashion that you obviously can tell they're, they're, they're good at what they do. Um, I'm not that good. I'm kind of curious and I find things around the house and then I, I kind of want to understand them better and my goal, I think, is not so much to um, uh, show you uh, how to repair in every instance in some cases I do repair let, let me restate that my goal is more or less a curiosity and a learning uh, experience and to share that with others and by no means as you'll see in this video uh, by no means am I an expert and, and I hope this is a forum for people to correct me or provide more insight or understanding to the various videos I have anyway so having said all that, and I hope I didn't insult any of my viewers or any of my uh, uh, the people that I do follow regularly, because um, that is not my intent. So what I did do is I um, I, did, I actually didn't use a screwdriver. I used the um, I used the bottle cap opener on a uh, uh, Swiss Army knife, and I, I didn't know whether I should saw this off, which was difficult because I could have broken the bowl. But what I ended up doing was just was going around and around and around, and 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 you can see where I did that. And finally, it like just broke away, and I realized it was two parts that snap apart. Um, and then when you look underneath here, so this is the uh, obviously this is the bulb, and this is filled with a gas um, and mercury vapor. I assume I assume that's pretty much standard with the old-fashioned tube fluorescence. Um, uh, I don't want to get into the bulb so much, but there are two filaments one on this end and one on that end just like the straight tubes in your house for the old uh, tube fluorescence um, and they came up with a, a fancy way to change the technology so that every lamp in your house could have one um, but you can see where those filaments that create uh, uh, heated emissions of electrons that travel through the uh, uh, gas and I don't know if it's argon the gas and the mercury vapor in here um, and then uh, it's an ultraviolet uh, uh, it's an ultraviolet um, uh, event and the ultraviolet then illuminates the phosphorescent coating on the inside of the tube but I don't really want to get into the tube technology I'm more interested in how I could use this circuit but um, before I cut it all apart you can see each filament on the bottom of the lamp uh, has two wires on it so uh, the voltage on the output of this circuit uh, feeds one side and the other side and um, one is insulated strange enough and one is not. They look to be about the same gauge wire. Um, not sure why they chose to insulate one side and not the other but they did. Um, that's a question for some of my viewers but the gauge is the same. Uh, so let me snip those off. So each one of those wires outputs, I read somewhere 260 volts. Obviously there's 115 into your house and into this lamp. This is a standard um, uh, lamp uh, socket. You screw it into your average lamp in your house and, and the bottom is uh, one side and this uh, uh, 
the screw is the other side so current goes in and out here and we can see where it connects inside later but the output of this thing i read is like 260 volts i'm sure that varies uh, let me go ahead and cut those and i'm going to cut them somewhere in the middle so that if i want to reuse it and reconnect it i can You can tell I don't have the best appliances, the best. Um, and I don't want to. I don't want to break. I don't want to break this tube to show you the filaments. Um, but just like in an incandescent light, there's a coil of tungsten on each side, and the output voltage from the circuit heats those up uh, to the point where they're red, and then the emission of electrons can start and. I think what happens is this will be since it's an AC output the um, emissions will travel from this as a cathode to the anode and then this becomes the cathode and that becomes the anode so it's a it's a, I wouldn't say a 60 Hertz event but it's a high frequency switching and um, the outputs and the uh, the filaments switch back and forth I believe and um, that will be some of the flicker you see in a lamp or in the tube lamps in your house. So that's the output voltage side of the circuit. And I'll set that aside next to my Elysian beer. Now this is the bottom of the circuit board and you can see where the output voltage is. Now if I peek under here, you can see, like I said earlier, where the 115 to the socket is connected. And I will cut that now so we can get a better look at the circuit board. So that's 115 standard household um, voltage supply. Set that aside. So that could, that's the same whether you have an incandescent lamp or uh, uh, a CFL. And then this is the um, circuitry that goes into it. You can see the inputs here. And then the outputs were over here. And I'll leave those there. Um... Now, I'm going to get a little shady here because I'm not entirely sure of this myself. And I'm going to talk it through and people can correct me. Um, and I didn't bring out a piece of paper, but the AC comes in. Um, you can see there's a, there's a few diodes and they're, they're scattered about. So I'm not sure I'm pointing to the right ones. But I think those are the input rectifiers. So you get 115 and a DC output. And then this big capacitor is going to uh, smooth out that. Uh, DC so you're gonna get uh, pulsed DC from the uh, bridge rectifier and then this capacitor here is gonna smooth it out let me uh, let me grab a let me grab a pencil and paper and I'll be right back so you get 115 AC out of the house it goes to a rectifier And that looks something like this. I won't get I won't get into drawing it. So it comes through, and then this side goes there, and this side comes over there, and it goes this way through the capacitor uh, on the positive half cycle. Um, so zoom through, boom, down, and on a negative half cycle, it goes uh, this way through again and back to the. Uh, High end. So no, you got a bridge rectifier there. You can look that up in a textbook. And this, so I believe those four uh, diodes are the bridge rectifier, and then it goes to this capacitor. So what happens after that is is where it gets kind of sketchy for me. Um, there's a transformer out here, and based on the size, so there's also a little, there's also a little uh, toroid inductor here, and some smaller capacitors, um, maybe that one there. I, I, I don't know the exact circuit diagram for this particular bulb, but what that is is um, you have a coil here and then a capacitor on the input of the uh, uh, bridge rectifier so that any noise from the switching EMI 
does not come back onto your into your house and, and mess with everything else in your house the tv and radio so there's also line filters um there's a little inductor there that's probably doing that and a small oh let's see i'm gonna guess it's that inducted there is the is the choke going into it because it's just a simple uh core with one coil on it so that's th that's going to be the line choke coming in and um you know i didn't really follow all these wire traces but let's just say one of these other capacitors is uh, uh filtering uh high frequency uh across so it doesn't go to your right to ground on your ground neutral um so now you can see there's these two I don't know if they're MOSFETs or 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 or, or, or uh, transistors of some kind, but what essentially happens, I guess, is that um, well, I drew that all bad. Um, you get kind of a half bridge rectification going on, um, and then. The outputs are, in a wacky way, are tied through uh, inductors, and it gets really complicated, and this is where I need help. But um, I think this is a step-up inductor that, after you switch, gets you to a higher voltage that feeds um, the two filaments. Then this filament. And I think they're um, isolated in some way, but... what? Essentially what happens is you get these two switches that build up a resonance with um, They're all tied back to the um, Inductor somehow and there's capacitors in here and what ends up happening is um, the inductance between the switches and the filaments resonates in such a fashion that um, you end up getting high voltage AC high frequency um peak outputs to the the filaments of the light bulb and they switch back really fast and at a higher voltage uh, to ignite and keep the bulb illuminated um, this part is really well described of course it's probably basically high school or entry level uh, engineering but no one ever really explains how the resonant outputs that are established by um, the various shared inductors there's capacitors in here that resonate with those inductors i assume that you know you, you see several capacitors and this this is somewhat mirror imaged about um the two filaments and these switch back and forth um and i don't i haven't seen a real good description on how you set up the resonance such that these uh transistors or MOSFETs are operating in their ideal Q points um, and I don't know if they just set up computer models of this and tweak it until they come up with values that work there's biasing with these resistors um, you know I was never good at microelectronics um, and I don't intend on learning it in this video um, so maybe what I'll do in a future video is actually try to sketch this out by following the traces and everything's labeled on here maybe I'll try to find the model number of the bulb but that really isn't the point. The point is, is you can take 115 of another source and plug it in here and then borrow these filament connections and you could end up essentially with a, a high frequency uh, oscillator that you could use for other circuits. And I've seen other videos where you can connect this uh, to a, a flyback converter on a, from a TV set and make plasma arcs and uh, a, a kind of Tesla coil type of thing. But um, but, you know, feel free to comment on my video and, and maybe point me to other videos or other references that kind of explain better what's going on on this and how you design an actual circuit such that it resonates within the operating points of these um, uh, solid state switching devices. Uh, I'd, I'd appreciate that and I'd also appreciate any comments um, uh, and uh, thumbs ups and sub subscriptions that I can get. And uh, I'm sorry this wasn't more informative with a better diagram but like i said i just kind of wanted to dig into this and see what i found so uh thanks for viewing and please subscribe to kafkuba thank you